morning. Professor Faith here. It is I and Miss Amanda. Hello. And in fact, we are not in biblical times. We are here today in church. Yes, we are really here. Yes, we're here where Pastor Kevin usually preaches on Sunday morning. And it's no time travel. It's really us. Huh. Okay, Professor, I want you to touch my hands. Just stop doubting and just believe. Um, Amanda, you are a follower of Jesus. You are not Jesus himself. Oh, sorry, Professor. You're right. So what are we doing here this morning? Well, you see, we're here today because I was tempted earlier. Tempted to do what? Tempted to take us back to one of the greatest examples of temptation. The garden with Adam and Eve. Oh, no. Or we could have gone to the wilderness where Jesus was tempted by Satan. <gasps> the horror. I wanted to teach our friends a lesson about temptation and how to avoid it to simply go to Jesus. Hmm. Why is that? Well, because when we are tempted, people who believe in Jesus are not, and they can stand in their faith. Huh. But isn't God always with us to protect us? He is. He is indeed always with us. But we can still give in to temptation. And I don't know about you, Amanda, but I do not always make the best choices. Yeah, I really don't either. God wants us to be wise. He wants us to follow the best way. And sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I really hate when that happens. But we're tempted. We need to flee and run for our lives and run towards God. You know, we have been really good at running for our lives. Yeah, but I'm really tired of running. Me too. God wants us to choose him over sin, to have faith that his way is better. Yes, as far away from those tempt temptations as we can get. So when you feel tempted to do wrong, have faith and trust in God's ways. And we have to do what we did at the Jordan River. And at the Philistines' house. And in the wilderness. And Babylon. What are you two doing in Pastor Kevin's pulpit? Run! Hey guys, welcome back to Whiz Bang Wednesdays. So glad that you were able to join us. Now, just like Professor Faith and Amanda said, they did not travel, but let's talk about travel for just a minute. Over the years, there's been a lot of change in transportation. Right now we use cars, we use planes, but we're gonna kind of rewind and think about travel in Jesus's time, over 2000 years ago. And in fact, they didn't have planes and no, they didn't have cars. They had to travel by foot or by horse. And they didn't really take vacations or go to amusement parks or parks or go and explore. In fact, they really didn't travel unless it was absolutely necessary. Another reason they traveled is if they were in danger. If they needed to run away from something that was dangerous or that was going to harm them, then they made sure to move and to move quickly. And we do the same thing when there's fires, tornadoes, maybe there's a hurricane coming and people have to move inland. There are lots of reasons why we would need to move and to move quickly. Well, today we're going to be talking about the same thing, but in a spiritual context, saying that we need to move away from sin. And when we're tempted, we need to turn in the other direction and run towards God. Hey guys, Pastor Isaac here, we're taking a look at our key passage for today. You are the God who does miracles. You show your power among the nations. Psalm 77, 14. This verse says that God shows his power among the nations. In fact, God's power defeats temptation. We need to make sure that we rely on God when we are tempted and know that when He what he has in store for us is better than the things of this world. This also brings us this week's bottom line, which says, run to God and away from sin. When we are faced with temptation and sin, we need to make sure to run away from that temptation and run towards God. Now, that may seem pretty obvious, but there are times when something is really, really tempting. But even in those moments, we need to trust in God and follow his commands and plans for our lives. Hello, Professor Faith here with another fun science experiment. Today, we're going to be doing something with a glass jar, a water balloon, and some fire. Some of the items you'll need are a piece of paper, a water balloon, a glass jar, a straw, and a lighter. Mm -hmm. 
For the first step, you're going to light the piece of paper on fire. You are then going to drop it into the jar. Oh. Next, you're going to take your water balloon and place it at the top of the glass jar. As you can see, the balloon has gotten stuck at the top of the jar. Next, you'll want to take your straw. You'll want to put it in there and wedge it between the balloon and the jar. And out it comes. As you can see, the balloon was stuck in the jar and got stuck at the top. Sometimes we can get stuck like that. No, I don't mean stuck in a jar, but stuck in tempting situations. But luckily, there is redemption and forgiveness from Jesus, and we can be set free when we ask for forgiveness. It is important to stay away and flee temptation. We need to make sure that we can stay away from sin and run towards God. There's no reason to linger or look when we know we are tempted. The sooner we move away, the less likely we are to give into sin. Having faith means that we choose God's commands over temptation. So we're going to take a look at a few verses in the Bible that talk about temptation. And the first one comes from Proverbs 4, 14 through 15. And it says, Don't do as the wicked do, and don't follow the path of evildoers. Don't even think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving. Proverbs 4 it tells us that we should avoid temptation completely. Don't even go to the places that make you feel tempted. And don't be around people who lead us into tempting situations. Whenever temptation does creep up on us, 1 Corinthians promises God will provide a way out. So 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, The te temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than what you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. God will always help us to find a different path away from sin and towards righteousness. Also, Hebrews 2.18 assures us that Jesus knows how we feel when we are tempted. Two eight, Hebrews 2.18, sorry, let me find it. 2.18 says, Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. Friends, he's not going to abandon us. He will be there to help. God is our refuge when we are tempted, and he will give us safety when we are tempted as well. In today's science experiment, we saw that the balloon got stuck in the jar, and that we had to put the straw in between the balloon and the jar to get the balloon to be set free. Now, it's a simple trick of science. There's nothing personal between the balloon and the jar, but it's a visual reminder of what we're talking about today. Temptation is not a laughing matter. It's nothing to play around with, and it's nothing to be, there's nothing to be gained from it. It's the reason that Jesus had to die on the cross. It's because sin separates us from God. And the longer we stay in these dangerous situations, the more likely it is that we'll sin. It's not enough to just run from temptation. We need to run away from it and run towards God. You see, sin is harmful not only to us, but to those around us as well. And when we choose God's way, we're choosing to love God and to love others. And I can't think of a better place to make our escape than running to God. And when we choose God's way, we'll do more than keeping ourselves from sinning. We can lead others away from sin as well. Standing with God and running from temptation, we can set an example that others are able to follow. It's not always easy to flee or be in, get out of tempting situations, especially when peer pressure is there and when friends are encouraging you. But we need to remember that we're running towards God and trying to get closer in our relationship with him. We need to make sure that we find ourselves on the right path. And when we are on the wrong path, we turn back to God. When we choose God's way, we'll do more than keep ourselves from sinning. We can also lead others away from sin. Standing with God and running from temptation, we can set an example 
that others may want to follow. You know, it really is not easy to flee from sin when our friends are being tempted as well. But your courage to run to God and flee from sin may just be what a friend needs to make the first step toward God themselves. We need to make sure to run when we find ourselves on the wrong path and to make our way back to where we need to be, and that's walking in faith with God. So let's pray. Dear God, please help us to be strong and flee from sin when we become tempted. Please um, just give us the courage to um, make the right decisions and to know that you are always with us. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.